Hello, this is Charles Laporte, and this is my sermon presentation for public speaking and preaching. I pastored a small town, or I pastored in a small town, actually it's considered the most rural town in Pennsylvania. My church was about 15 miles out of town. You could say it was rural. Uh, we were in the mountains of north central Pennsylvania, and, and any people who moved there were considered flatlanders. Uh, I guess you could call it backwoods. And in this area, the local creek played an important role in the lives of the residents. Uh, the route you might travel depended greatly on the amount of rainfall prior to your trip. The phrase, God willing, and the creek don't rise, was mentioned quite often in response to one's plans for the day. Our intentions for the future might be honorable, however, if it is not God's will, our planning is in vain. It is the Lord that has his hand on our future. I think of the old song, One Day at a Time. The chorus goes like this, One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Don't know that that gets much play uh, with the young people anymore, but uh, I remember that growing up. Tomorrow may never be mine. We have no promise of one more, one more day on this earth. Yet some feel the need and the desire to make grandiose plans scheming to obtain the riches of the world. Our text is found in James 4, 13 through 17, and I'm going to be using the English, English Standard Version. And our text deals with boasting about tomorrow. So let us begin. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go in, into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So what about the future? What if tomorrow never comes? The answer is don't worry about tomorrow, instead focus on today. We will not see tomorrow unless it is the Lord's will or desire for our lives. Have faith that God holds tomorrow. The future holds many questions for us. Many contemplate their future with the hopes of striking it rich. Consider those who spent their very last penny in order to make the harsh, treacherous trip to Alaska in order to mine for gold. Here's a short video. The Klondike Gold Rush was started by a part-time prospector by the name of George Carmack, though most people up until then called him Lion George. I had a premonition the night before. I dreamt I saw two giant king salmon with golden scales and gold coins for eyes. The next day while I was fishing, I dipped my pan in the creek and good heavens above pulled out a thumb-sized chunk of pure gold. I felt as if I had just dealt myself a royal flush at the game of life. When word got out of his discovery, close to a million people headed towards the Yukon in a frantic race to stake a claim before the gold ran out. A hundred thousand people made it to the foot of the Alaska mountains at the start of winter. 
Some had as much as a ton and a half of supplies each. Others bury the summer clothes on their backs. They slipped and fell from the rocks. They froze solid in the blowing snow. Lying George Carmack had triggered the biggest epidemic of gold fever in the history of the world. These individuals made that trip only to find nothing but broken lives and broken dreams. People have dreams and plans for their future. It is human nature to become, become rich, I, I believe. Is this not the American dream? Whoever dies with the most toys wins? Or let's try to keep up with the neighbors or the Joneses? Other procrastinate failing to engage life in a timely manner. My mother just shared with me that her greatest regret was not visiting her own mother more while she was alive. How many people live a life of could have, would have, or should have? It is true we do not know tomorrow or what tomorrow may hold, and it is also true we will never get yesterday back. Is there any guarantee in life? None of us knows what tomorrow may bring. The miners had no idea that they would lose everything. No one could have predicted the la last stock market crash. People put their dreams on the line with the hope of reaping a great reward. There's no guarantee for tomorrow. Ecclesiastes 8.7 states, For he does not know what is to be, or who can tell him how it will be. We can make big plans, however we must understand our plans are not guaranteed. If we had guarantees, wouldn't we be, 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 wouldn't we be buying up every lottery ticket to reap the rewards? Our text changes the topic from tomorrow to, to life, asking what is your life? But is it really changing topics? If we have no tomorrow, we have no life. James shows us that life is short, quick and brief. Here today, gone tomorrow, the little dash on your tombstone between the years you were born and the year you, you die represent your lifespan. This scripture likens our life to a mist that vanishes quickly. We have very little time on, on this earth. Look how many have passed before us that have left little or no record of their life. For all the men and women who travel to Alaska in search of gold, all that remains is ghost towns and perhaps crumbling tombstones and foundations. They have vanished just like the mist. Thankfully, the text gives us advice for life. We are not to live according to our plans or desires, rather we are to submit ourselves to God. This brings us back to that phrase from the mountains, God willing, and the crick don't rise. We need to approach each new day and our plans in light of God's will. If the Lord wills it, I will do this tomorrow. I can do nothing without God and His grace that empowers me. With this in mind, we are to make the most of each opportunity each day, as we have no guarantee of the opportunity presenting itself again. When we are empowered and receive a blessing from God, who are we, who are we to boast in arrogance and pride? If we boast, let us boast in the Lord placing our faith and trust in God, while we give God the glory in all things. 1 Corinthians 1.31 states, So that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. We can do nothing in and of ourselves, rather it is God that work in us. The text reminds us that if we fail to do the right thing, it is sin. What is the right thing? It is following the prompting of the Holy Spirit in God's Word. Scripture tells us that, that unless we take up our cross, we cannot follow Christ. We are told to deny ourselves, and our agenda is nothing. His will is everything. 
John 3.30 says, He must increase, but I must decrease. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Sin separates us from a right relationship with God. The text lends itself to financial topics, yet it speaks of life. If we fail to do what is right, we are in sin. The text stresses urgency in doing what is right, for we do not know what tomorrow holds. It's always easy the night before to get up early the next morning. The source of that quote is unknown, but it's so true. I'll state it again. It's always easy the night before to get up early the next morning. We have much more to lose if our focus remains on making a profit, living the good life, or if we fail to seize opportunities as they are presented. Is there a guarantee we will live through the night? Can we get back yesterday or relive today? Is there a guarantee that Christ will not return for the church before we encounter the next day? What if either of these events occur and we fail to do what is right? Let us examine ourselves and see where our priorities are. Are they on tomorrow or are they on God? Thank you.